Today on Investigate TV, trains stopping for days cutting off communities, with children risking their lives just to get to school. You want to start moving, nothing's going to move any second now. We speak to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. It's always frustrating when you see behavior by a company, and you're a regulator, and you can't just grab them by the collar and say, stop it. Plus, after watching our report, lawmakers like Senator Raphael Warnock are working to hold companies accountable. Well, we showed you, it stunned you. It, it's, it's unbelievable. Investigate TV starts right now. Hello and welcome to Investigate TV, I'm Lee Zurich. Trains are an essential part of our supply chain, moving over a billion tons of cargo a year. But there are risks and hazards. We've seen toxic train derailments, people killed. But as our Josie Sturman and partner ProPublica report, a train can be dangerous just by standing still. It's the kind of moment that takes your breath away. A little girl in a bright red coat, tiny arms and legs wiggling underneath a train car that could move at any moment. This is a situation that would usually send people running, but in Hammond, Indiana, there's no commotion, no cry for help when an elementary school student crawls between the tracks. It's quiet as she dusts herself off, casually picks up her book bag and a dropped water bottle and carries on. Her book bag could have got caught, her jacket could have got caught, the train could have started moving while she caught. Moments like this still shock Akeisha Henderson, who moved here nearly three years ago. You better start moving, nothing's going to move any second now. A few months ago, she started recording them, posting on social media, showing the world what normal looks like in a city where trains may block the street for hours at a time. There's no end this way that we can cross over. It's too far down leaving kids with no choice but to take their chances, tangling with the steel beast that often stands in their way to school. I know they're used to it, I can tell, because it's like they didn't hesitate to do it. They didn't pause and think. They're just like, okay, we're just going over. Like, it was nothing to them. It's a harrowing situation people in this community say has become commonplace, with park trains blocking people and cars from crossing several times a week. Industry experts tell us trains generally stop like this because their crews have reached the maximum hours they can work or because of rail switching practices which impact when and where trains can move. When they finally do, we saw there's little notice given. It's heartbreaking, terrifying. Our national investigative team and our partner ProPublica repeatedly saw why. Watching a teenage student running late hefting his bike through stalled train cars on his way to school crowds of elementary kids gathering to see if a train would move before they had to file across one by one to make the morning bell. Parents helping their children with the big jump and even that little girl in the red coat crawling alone to the other side of the tracks where a crossing guard waits just two blocks down the street to personally guide students safely through the next intersection on their route. The middle school is right here where the sign is at and straight down the street is the high school, more than high school. The trip to attend them, often a risky one, captured on a mother's cell phone in hopes the footage would finally help to change things. Someone else needs to see this. Look at that little bitty baby. What do you think when you see that? I think it's outrageous. We took the video to members of Congress. When you saw that video, what was your reaction? It's shocking. And Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. It's exactly why we believe that there needs to be and can be more done uh, about this issue. An issue that impacts communities across the country. Our national investigative team combed through data from the Federal Railroad Administration, which has been collecting blocked crossing complaints from the public since 2019. Last year alone, that data shows more than 30,000 reports of blocked crossings across the nation, with Texas, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, and Tennessee in the top five for complaints. Nearly 1,000 reports to the FRA detailed crossings blocked for more than a day, and hundreds of complaints report serious concerns, like pedestrians who climb on, over, or through trains. They also detail an even wider issue. 
first responders blocked from crossing the tracks for hours at a time or longer. Calling the traffic up on when they complain yeah, Jonathan, the actually it's been almost nine days according to the mayor that this train has been stalled here. It's a problem we've found can have serious, sometimes life-threatening consequences with blocked crossings blamed for injuries, deaths and devastating delays. You see ambulances get stopped all the time. From the Ohio house fire that kept burning as crews navigated their way around a stopped train. Multiple emergency responders were delayed this morning, all due to parked train on the train. Tracks. Two communities in Arkansas, Georgia, Kansas, and Texas dealing with blocked crossings that put lives at risk. There's been a couple kids where it lasted three days. Mike Hull understands. When you do know that there's a medical emergency or you do know that there's an active fire, I mean, it's frustrating. He's been a firefighter for more than 20 years and is now union president in Hammond, where he says police officers, ambulances and fire trucks are forced to find ways around stalled trains on a weekly basis. In other towns and cities across the U.S., long, slow moving trains that go on for miles also freeze first responders. Even in a crisis, though, they have no authority to make sitting trains move or to limit how long lengthier carriers block crossings. The Federal Railroad Administration doesn't either, with no federal laws related to blocked crossings. For decades, it was states that had control over what happened on the rails. 37 of them in D.C. have anti-blocking laws on the books. But a series of court rulings in recent years have essentially made those powerless. The cities and towns and states have tried to challenge the railroads. Um, obviously, the railroads have, have come out well ahead. And so I, I don't know if they're giving us you know, the middle finger and, and saying we're going to do it because we've won in court or if they're just ignoring it. But uh, we need help. We need help. That help could come from the Supreme Court with attorneys general from across the country arguing the high court needs to decide once and for all who's really in charge of regulating the rails when it comes to blocked crossings. But in the meantime, some believe Congress needs to step in and take action. It's a tragedy uh, waiting, waiting to happen. Texas Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia has been hearing about blocked crossings for more than a decade. In her district in Houston, she's been told first responders have been detoured by trains more than 3,000 times since 2019. I think they need to be more responsible and more responsive, and the F FRA needs to exert more oversight. Garcia wants to empower the agency with more authority. She's proposing the Don't Block Our Communities Act. It would ban rail carriers from letting their trains block crossings for more than 10 minutes and also give the FRA the ability to fine companies who repeatedly go over the limit. Is that the only way to get them to stop doing this? Well, you know, I'm, I'm old school and I'm a former judge and I think until you hit people in the pocketbook, you don't get their attention. Well, it's always frustrating when you see behavior by a company and you're a regulator and you can't just grab them by the collar and say, stop it. Secretary Buttigieg believes this is the moment for Congress to act and give the FRA, which falls under his umbrella, the legal power to directly regulate blocked crossings. But he's not waiting for solutions. He's funding them. The Transportation Department is handing out $3 billion as part of a first-of-its-kind grant program for projects across the country that make crossings safer or get rid of them altogether. If we can target those resources to where there is the most inconvenience or the most danger, then that's going to be a big win for the communities that are impacted. Many of them low-income communities of color whose residents say they feel helpless, wanting the rail industry to be proactive when it comes to their safety. Does someone have to die in Hammond or in one of these other cities for them to take action and be serious about solving this? Well, it shouldn't come to that. It shouldn't require that. But what we have seen is that the, the strongest uh, public reaction happens when it's too late for the person, who, people who are impacted. The Association of American Railroads and Industry Lobbying Group says safety will always be their top priority, with their members committed to being responsible community partners. The group pushed for the program to eliminate crossings and generally agrees that stop trains aren't good for communities or their business. That's why rail companies use a variety of strategies to minimize them. If those strategies are being used in Hammond, our team didn't see them in action. A Norfolk Southern train sat blocking crossings for at least four hours during the busy morning rush, echoing what we've repeatedly heard from the community. If we turn down this money, you'll be here 10 years from now talking about stop trains and nothing will be done. That's a fact. 
A recent meeting had residents facing off over a proposed solution, a highway overpass that safety advocates say wouldn't actually solve the problem for pedestrians and would take years to build. Hammond may not have to wait. Norfolk Southern, whose train we saw blocking crossings, abruptly canceled an interview with Investigate TV and ProPublica. But after we posted our story online, Hammond's mayor says he got a call from the company's CEO saying he wants to fix the situation. We're told they're now working together on a solution to protect kids whose walk to school is often blocked by stop trains with details coming soon. We did it. You did it. We got the message out. The message that trains that clog cities and towns across America, creating delays and potentially deadly hazards, should not just be a way of life. Something children like the little girl in the red coat have to go through or even under when they're railroaded by a system that leaves them no choice. Norfolk Southern confirmed the conversation with Hammond's mayor, saying we'll continue to value our partnership with Hammond and work with them on long-term solutions. The company attributes much of the blocked crossing issue there on a particular intersection with other railroads that requires permission to move through. They also note that trains are headed to nearby Chicago, the nation's busiest rail hub. Thanks, Josie. Coming up, a money-making strategy potentially putting profit over safety. The danger of miles long trains after the break. Welcome back to Investigate TV. Freight trains are longer than ever. According to ProPublica, some have cars stretching two even three miles long. Massive trains are harder to control, taking more time to inspect, and they leave crossing gates down for ages. Angie Riccono shows us that can be a matter of life or death if you're waiting for first responders. Frankfort, Kansas is in Marshall County. It has fewer than a thousand people. There's the downtown area and farms. There are also train tracks. How fast are we going to be able to get there to render aid to those individuals, uh, the public that are injured? And that's my biggest concern. It's something first responders calculate in their heads as trains get longer. If it stops in the right place, it blocks all three crossings that lead out of Frankfurt. Here's a map of the town and where the tracks cross main roads. If a long train passes through or stops, here's the alternative. First responders need to head north up Route 9, then cut east and eventually south, then backtracking down gravel roads. The price you pay is time. For those victims, minutes are, seem like hours. And if you're adding 15 minutes to it, that's a long time for someone to be sitting there that's critically injured. Frankfurt has had its warning. It came in the form of a rural structure fire. Frankfurt fire was blocked at all three intersections. And that's where the fire had started inside there. Other departments were yeah. called in. Obviously it consumed the entire building and then got into the grass. Damage to a field. But everyone worries about the train that blocks an ambulance. It's dangerous, it really is. When we were in town, we met Skip McMillan. It's a problem and they know it. Skip lives on the edge of town across the tracks. The ambulance is nearby, but not if there's a train blocking the path. He'd be waiting 20 to 30 minutes. My problem with that is I've got heart issues. He's had two heart attacks. He's called to complain about trains. I just say the railroad is a lot stronger than the government because they do what they want. Firm information on long trains is tough to come by. The government has tried. But only two out of seven Class 1 railroads provided information. That revealed the length has increased by 25 percent since 2008. It's not unusual now to hear of trains several miles long. There has been um, trains up to five miles that have gone from Kansas City to Marysville and cutting all those communities off. Senator Carol McGinn has introduced a bill to address long trains and cap the length at one mile. I'm just asking the railroad to be a good neighbor. To keep up with our latest investigations, follow us on social media. We're at Investigate TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Up next, we sit down with our partners at ProPublica, 
Plus, after watching our reporting in shock, lawmakers like Senator Raphael Warnock plan to take action, adding key amendments to fast-moving legislation. This is more than an inconvenience. This is dangerous. Uh, children should have to risk their lives to get to school. Those interviews coming up. Welcome back to Investigate TV. Our partner ProPublica brought the block crossings crisis to our attention. Our Josie Sturman spoke with ProPublica's Topher Sanders about the investigation's origin. Obviously, we partnered on this project. I'm curious, what drove your interest first and foremost when it comes to these railroad issues, blocked crossings? How did it come to mind? Injustice. Um, I'm driven in my reporting by a spirit of following injustice and seeing if there's a way to highlight that and, and find remedies to it. And the team that I'm working with, a group of great reporters, we all were driven by that. We went to Hammond and we saw what was happening there and knew it had to be written about. And once you saw what was happening in Hammond, did that just galvanize your team essentially to move forward? And why did you reach out to us? Well, we knew the power of images was going to be extremely incredible for this story. Uh, we pride ourselves in the words that we can put down on paper or we, we think we're really good at it, but there's nothing like being able to see it. Just like the people you spoke with when you went to him and said, seeing it uh, changes how you see this issue. And we thought that your work and, and what you could bring to it would be very, very helpful to this project. What do you think can be the potential outcomes from this kind of reporting specifically? I'd hope that the community and the railroads would be able to communicate better. Every time we go to a community that has this kind of problem, seems to be an impasse between the ability to sit down at the table, find a solution. And maybe if it's about protecting children, a solution can be found. Did you have any hesitations at all, given how much power, influence, and money this industry has? No reservation whatsoever. I think that when there's a lot of power, a lot of influence, that's exactly where investigative reporters need to go. That's those are the people we need to be asking tough questions of. There's no better industry to start asking tough questions of because we want them to be good actors. We want them to be good neighbors, be good corporate citizens. So no reservations whatsoever for me and my team. If people do not live in a community that is directly impacted by one of these blocked crossings, what would you say to them that you've learned through your reporting that should make them care about this problem as a whole, just as an American? Well, everyone benefits from the railroad industry. You know, all these products and services that are kind of going back and forth, we all benefit from them, whether we're talking Amazon packages or, or anything else. So the railroad industry is integral to the way we live in this country. It's an industry that should behave and act uh, with the utmost ideals. And so I, I would hope that uh, people who don't live in railroad communities read these stories and say, you know, I want those, those railroad industry to be good actors. And so, yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can make them the best they can be. Want to hear more stories like this? Check out the Investigate TV YouTube page for our latest content and partnerships. Coming up, new developments since we started this investigation. Our work with ProPublica is sparking change. Josie Sturman brings us the latest after the break. Welcome back to Investigate TV. We're continuing our look into block crossings. There have already been developments since our investigation started. Josie Sturman is back with some highlights, starting with Georgia Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. Josie. Well, Lee, within two weeks of this story posting online, Senator Warnock had already secured two key bill provisions in bipartisan rail safety legislation that's already getting traction on the Hill. In announcing those provisions, which would deal directly with rail crossings that block children getting to school, Warnock cited our reporting with ProPublica. We sat down with him after the bill passed successfully out of committee. I'm going to keep building on this uh, so that we can create so that we don't have situations where we literally see school children climbing over and under trains, which could start moving at any moment. 
what we showed you, it stunned you. It, it, it's unbelievable. If these large uh, uh, railway corporations are, are able to act with impunity and uh, no penalties, no accountability, this is what you get. We have to hold them accountable. This disproportionately impacts certain communities. Uh, the most marginalized members of our community and to see children throwing backpacks over a train or uh, wondering if it's safe to crawl under a train on their way to school. I mean, it's unacceptable. And Josie, he's not the only one who feels that way. You've also heard from state lawmakers who want action. Absolutely. Within a day of putting our investigation online, a group of Indiana lawmakers, some of whom represent the community featured in our story, began writing the transportation secretary, highlighting our work. In this letter, that group of 10 lawmakers from both sides of the aisle urged Secretary Buttigieg to act in light of our reporting, which they said highlighted the dangers of trains blocking crossings for hours, putting children's lives at risk. They said we must immediately address the situation and told the secretary he should capitalize on this moment when all eyes are on the situation. There's no doubt this story is getting attention. You've seen huge response on social media. What are people saying? Lee, this story immediately went viral online with our video of children climbing under and over trains, racking up hundreds of thousands of views just in a matter of hours. People across the country began sharing their outrage, their calls for action, and also their own experiences crawling around trains in towns and cities nationwide. Now, if blocked crossings are something you have seen in your community, you can report it to the federal government. They take complaints online. The FRA website lets you file complaints about trains that are stopped where you live, and we're told they're actually looking closely at that data to push rail operators to be more responsive to these situations when they happen and to also fix this issue long term. You can also look up all the complaints that have been filed across the country all the way back to 2019 when the feds set up this site. You can look by date, by state, or by company to see how block crossings are impacting your community. All right, Josie, great work. Thanks so much. If you're looking for more investigative reporting on demand, download our streaming apps on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. And that is it for us. Thanks for joining us here on Investigate TV. We hope to see you next week.